for the top speaker of the house today, we have a four-way tie. We had some outstanding speakers of the house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the four uh, people who were uh, the uh, scoring the highest points today to come on down. And I have in my hand four pieces of paper. One of these pieces of paper has an X marked on it. That person will be, by luck of the draw, the person who will be uh, the top speaker uh, who will preside over the final debate. All four uh, top speakers will receive uh, due recognition. All right, so if the following people would please join me here at the front. Bradley Leon. It's either Angelica or Angelica Felipe. Eugene Paul. And I'm really sorry about what I'm about to do this name. <laughs> um, Aisas? Say your name properly. Aisha? Aisha. Okay. Alrighty, so the next is to tell you about the two teams that will be on the final round up here today. So if I could ask uh, Team Victor from Eight Hundred. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this debate. My name is Flight Sergeant Leon. I will be your Speaker of the House for this debate. The timekeeper for this debate will be Flight Corporal Kowal. Today we are here to debate the topic, be it resolved that NATO is an outdated institution and should therefore be dissolved. On my right, representing the government, we have Team Victor consisting of LAC, Nambiar, and Corporal Mariak as the Prime Minister and Minister of the Crown, respectively. On my left, representing the opposition, we have Team Tango, represented by Flight Corporal Tondro and Warrant Officer Second Class Armstrong as the first member of the opposition and leader of the opposition, respectively. Each speaker will have five minutes to say their speech, with the exception of the leader of the opposition, who will have seven minutes, and the Prime Minister's final rebuttal speech, which will be two minutes. I ask that all cell phones be turned off for this debate and the audience remain silent. And without further ado, I'd like to open the floor and invite the Prime Minister to deliver his speech. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, members of the House, honorable judges, and most welcome guests. The government, myself and my fellow colleague, strongly believe that NATO is an outdated institution and should, therefore, be dissolved. Mr. Speaker, the government would like to first commence this debate by defining the terms of the resolution. Over a span of three years, NATO will be dissolved and all remaining military logistics and personnel will be supplied towards the UN and all remaining money will go towards the UN so as to further develop the organization and reestablish and restabilize and reinforce one international organization. Mr. Speaker, NATO stands for North Atlantic Treaty Organization and is an alliance of 28 countries from North America and Europe. It was founded on April 4th, 1949, for the sole purpose of countering the threat of the Soviet Union during the Cold War. NATO is a creature of the Cold War, and the government believes that it should be dissolved. NATO's purpose, according to the NATO website, is to safeguard the freedom and security of its members through political and military means. NATO remains valuable to its members for a number of reasons, but most importantly, because the expansion of the alliance has played an important role in consolidating stability and democracy in Central Europe, where members continue to look to NATO as a hedge against the return of a threat from Russia. 
But in fact, Russia is not a threat to NATO, North America, or the EU. North America has US, which has one of the strongest militaries in the world. And the EU has over 2 million personnel, while Russia only has 700,000. Therefore, the EU and North America are perfectly capable of ensuring their own stability and security without the use of NATO. In fact, 22 of NATO's member countries are also a part of the UN. By dissolving NATO, not only would the military logistics, personnel, and money go towards reinforcing the UN, but there would be one international organization that the world could look up to for security and support. Even though NATO and UN have different views, most of their objectives overlap. When NATO dissolves and all its belongings go to the UN, the UN can adopt and continue its missions and focus on military peacekeeping. Mr. Speaker, the government would like to bring up a point concerning NATO's arsenal, nuclear arsenal. According to the coalition to oppose the arms, NATO's official military doctrine reserves for itself the right to use nuclear weapons, despite the fact that in 1996, the World Court made such use or threat illegal. NATO's first year's use nuclear weapons policy means it is willing to use nuclear weapons against a country even when none have been used against it. NATO member states, US, UK, and France, now have more than 9,000 active warheads in service and about 60% of the world's nuclear arsenal. These three NATO states have committed some of their nuclear weapons to NATO for its use in war. Mr. Speaker, it seems very unclear. Does NATO want to condone peace or does it want to condone war? Also, Mr. Speaker, NATO's main objective is peace, but it is indirectly funded war. NATO funded ISIS in order to overthrow the Syrian leader before ISIS went rogue, to which it confessed. Source? Uh, Globalresearch.ca. This is because on May 18th, Judicial Watch published a selection of recently declassified documents that were obtained from the U.S. Department of Defense and the U.S. State Department as a result of a lawsuit filed against the U.S. government. This reveals that in 2012, U.S. and NATO have admitted in their own documents to funding and supporting Al-Qaeda and ISIS in Syria and Iraq. As the members of the House can see from these examples, NATO is doing more harm than good. By dissolving NATO and giving its belongings to the UN, the UN will be a stronger and more secure organization that the world can look up to for security and support. The government urges the members of the House to side with the government and dissolve NATO due to the points just made and points that will be made by my fellow colleague. By dissolving NATO, the UN can become a stronger and bigger organization that will ensure the safety and security of not just its members, but for every one of us by working for the greater good. Thank you. I would now like to give the judges a moment to finish their scoring. I would now like to call upon the first member of the opposition to deliver his speech. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the opposition would like to begin by stating once that the core of the treaty is for the promotion of peace and freedom, and armed conflict is only meant as a means of defense. Bear in mind, Mr. Speaker, that when we say armed conflict, this includes nuclear weaponry. We do not suggest disbanding our weaponry in favor of diplomacy through the UN. The UN has had multiple failures across many years and one of its only successful encounters has occurred in the 1950s with the Suez Crisis. As we can see, the UN's approach of diplomacy only and no weapons doesn't really work and it is not applicable to the historic world and definitely not the world of today. As the government suggested, spending money towards the UN after disbanding NATO, this is also going to be ineffective. The UN, Mr. Speaker, has many internal issues within itself. This includes the state of Iran. Iran is a member nation of the United Nations 
and has had many problems, including but not limited to breaking international conduct, Mr. Speaker. This is on the onus of the UN. And the UN has taken no action on this to date, Mr. Speaker. This symbolizes how the UN, especially through the Russian-Ukrainian crisis that we see all around us today, fails to act both externally and internally towards its own ambitions. NATO puts this into practice, and we can see that. NATO has recently hosted peace talks on April 8th of 2016, fairly recently, about this crisis in Russia and Ukraine. What has the UN done? Well, to date, there has been nothing. We could find no information regarding the UN's participation, and yet NATO? NATO has already been jumping into the diplomatic side, exactly what the UN tries to promote. The point here is, Mr. Speaker, NATO does it better. And while there may be some flaws to both organizations, the opposition believes that there is one ultimate solution. Mr. Speaker, there exists an organization known as the Partnership for Peace. This organization was founded by NATO for the affiliates, the Eastern Bloc countries, formerly part of the USSR or Warsaw Pact, that wish but are not able to join NATO. Mr. Speaker, this is one way to work around the problems that NATO brings up. The problems of NATO are reduced and practically abolished by this partnership. If we are able to spend the money instead by expanding NATO and merging with this partnership for peace, this already existent affiliation, we are able to encourage peace talks, diplomacy. We will still have the capability to use armed forces as a last resort. While diplomacy takes over the floor, we still need that capability, Mr. Speaker, to be able to fight back against foes such as Russia. Furthermore, this will encourage NATO, the Partnership for Peace, to have open relations with every nation. This way, we can ensure that even though NATO aims for security, we can make it better. We don't need to dissolve NATO. You and we can strengthen NATO with the Partnership for Peace, with the capability to enforce. But before enforcing anything, we need the capability to talk. The military power of NATO Mr. Speaker, merged with the diplomatic powers of the Partnership for Peace will create an open alliance that allows for international peace, freedom, security, and unity. Mr. Speaker, this is why the resolution of dissolving NATO must fall. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would now like to give the judges a moment to finish their scoring. I would now like to call upon the Minister of the Crown to deliver his speech. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would first like to start off with rebutting some of the points that were brought up by the government. First of all, the United Nations has, over, uh, has 193 members as of right now compared to the, compared to the NATO 28 members. International laws have been broken by NATO. Uh, the UN has some flaws, but the, NATO, the international laws broken by the North Atlantic Treaty Organization are far worse. And that's why we want to make it better. There are also many organizations that can effectively replace NATO that are in the world right now. NATO has three, pro three main actions. It has peacekeeping, disaster relief, and humanitarian acts. There are many organizations, like I said, to replace this, such as the AAH, or Action Against Hunger, which is disaster and humanitarian crisis relief. There is CARE, which is humanitarian aid. Rise on a point of order. Please explain your point. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the uh, honorable member of the go government is not referring to the speaker, he's referring to the rest of the house. Point well taken. Please refrain from, from addressing the rest of the house and only address me when doing your when presenting your speech. I apologize, Mr. Speaker. As I was saying, Mr. Speaker, there are many organizations that may 
substitute NATO once it is dissolved. To continue my list, Mr. Speaker, there is Doctors Without Borders, which delivers medical help to populations endangered by war, civil strife, epidemics, or natural disasters, Mr. Speaker. There is also the European Union, Mr. Speaker, which, which offers disaster relief and peacekeeping. The United Nations are there too, Mr. Speaker. They offer disaster relief, humanitarian acts, and peacekeeping. Finally, there is the Red Cross, which offers disaster relief. Mr. Speaker, it is clear to, it is clear to see that there are many organizations in the world right now that are active that can quickly and easily replace NATO and all its goals. How many are fighting against Russia and its goals besides NATO? Also, there are the tw 22 out of the 28 members of NATO are part of the United Nations. By dissolving NATO, all military logistics, personnel, and the $871 billion earned annually by NATO by its members can be used to further develop the European Union, Mr. Speaker, and the European Union has many more capabilities than NATO, Mr. Speaker. So they can waste more money like they did on Greece? Speaking of wasting money, NATO, NATO in 2015 earned $871 billion, Mr. Speaker, and that hard-earned taxpayers' money, $871 billion, were spent on only five missions. That is a huge amount. What was done with this money? More than the UN does. Finally, NATO in Yugoslavia. NATO in Yugoslavia. There was a war of aggression by NATO in Yugoslavia that was illegal under NATO's own Charter of Rights as well as international laws, Mr. Speaker. Source. NATO um, uh, Emperor.com, Mr. Speaker. NATO waged a war against Yugoslavia, and this war broke the laws of its own charter, Mr. Speaker, as well as international laws. NATO forces used over 1,200 warplanes and helicopters to fly 35,000 combat missions against Yugoslavia. NATO dropped 20,000 bombs and missiles containing over 80 tons of, ex of explosives on that country, Mr. Speaker. Contrary to international law, NATO targeted civilian infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, including over 1,000 targets of absolutely no military significance at all, Mr. Speaker. This included schools, hospitals, farms, bridges, historical monuments, museums, factories, oil refineries, and petrochemical plants. NATO's illegal bombing campaign severely impacted the health of Yugoslavia's civilian population, and, and thousands of civilians alone, innocent people, were killed. And at least 6,000 people, Mr. Speaker, were injured, and countless others, especially children, which had to live through the conflict and the atrocities performed there by NATO, suffered severe psychological issues, and severe psychological issues, Mr. Speaker, and they developed such, and they developed psychological trauma. This is why NATO must be dissolved. It stands against all international laws. Thank you. I would now like to give the judges a moment to finish their scoring. I would now like to call upon the leader of the opposition to deliver his speech. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to call uh, to your attention an example. If a cadet breaks regulations, no matter how big or small, do we disseminate the entire cadet program? No. Yes, there have been some mistakes made by NATO, but it is not upon the organization itself. It is founded upon positive ideals. Mr. Speaker, it is up to the member states to that have caused these issues that have focused on preserving assets and resources rather than anything tangible to the rest of the world, like humanitarian aid, is up to them. 
to solve their own problems and uh, figure out a new way to go forward without uh, this baseball bat of NATO to go around racking up uh, dollars and using the military to protect foreign assets. Mr. Speaker, I would like to also offer up a question. Do you really believe that we are not in danger right now? We are in an increasingly in, uh, troubled environment. In our world, we are facing many different problems, crises across the world on a global scale. The Russo-Ukrainian uh, crisis highlighted just one small portion of this. Mr. Speaker, it was uh, said by Alexander Nekrasov, a former Kremlin advisor in 2014, in effect, the UN has not offered any proposal on the resolution on the Ukrainian crisis that might have been e considered even remotely workable. Total silence, really. Do we really think we can rely on an organization like the UN who has completely ignored the cries, the pleas, the asks, uh, NATO the, the questions the laws. of uh, help or guidance, anything that has come out of the Ukraine? We have heard nothing from UN on the situation. Furthermore, NATO has taken a step forward to attempt to uh, better on the UN's faults. It is not sat idly by while people have died, while people have been uh, forced out of their homes, while a country has been split apart. It has tried to talk, and we are seeing that. Taking Russia as a further example of why we need NATO, we are in an increasingly uh, dangerous world. In the last few years, Russia has become a nationalist and revisionist power, one that violates international law and uses military power to achieve its geopolitical ends at the expense of its neighbors and wider European security. Mr. Speaker, that was from NATO Deputy Secretary General Alexander Hirschbau speaking to the uh, NATO Parliamentary Assembly in London of 2014. Now, this has not changed. In fact, it's gotten worse. Because in April of 2014, the USS Donald Cook was buzzed by several Russian fighter jets. They performed simulated military attacks on a foreign vessel. And the UN has done nothing. But it gets better, Mr. Speaker. This year, two years later, almost on the same day, the 13th of April, 2016, Russian Su-24 fighter jets performed simulated attacks on the exact same vessel in the Baltic Sea. Mr. Speaker, the UN has done nothing. Why would we put all this in, uh, effort and money and time into an organization that clearly is doing nothing? And all the other ones that are out there that were mentioned, uh, the AAH, the EU, Doctors Without Borders, yes, they are good organizations. Yes, they are uh, charitable organizations. But they do not have the funding, they do not have the power, they do not have the responsibility as private organizations that NATO does. NATO sets the standard. NATO is responsible for, for killing civilians. For the world we have today. It prevented war. And NATO is not willing to stand by while the world crumbles. That is why, Mr. Speaker, this resolution must fail. Thank you, Mr. I would now like to call on the Prime Minister to deliver his final rebuttal speech. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One main point that my honorable opponent across the floor stated was that <clears throat> why would we put efforts into UN that stands by idly doing nothing? But then again, why would we put efforts into an organization that doesn't mind dropping 20,000 bombs on Yugoslavia and killing 528 civilians with 80, 80 tons of explosives? And then again, when we uh, dissolve NATO and give all its belongs to UN, Russia won't be a problem since Russia is also part of the UN, and 22 of NATO member states out of 28 are part of the UN. So they would be working on the same side. So Russia won't be a problem anymore. And finally, NATO can't stand by to watch while the world crumbles, but it can stand by to watch as a country is blown to bits while civilians die, while innocent children die when it drops bombs. Can't stand by to watch the world crumble, to stand by to watch a country crumble. That is why the government believes that NATO is an outdated institution and should therefore be dissolved. All its belongings will go to the UN, which has 193 members who can put 
all of that money, that funding, those logistics to better use to help our world. NATO doesn't seem to understand that war doesn't decide who's right. It only decides who's left. NATO says their main objective is world peace, but in fact, it's world pieces. That is why the government believes and urges the members of the House today to go against this resolution, uh, to favor this resolution, and to make sure that NATO is dissolved. Thank you. I would now like to call upon the captain of Team Victor to deliver their vote of thanks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would first like to thank the Speaker of the House for overseeing this debate and making sure that the rules were um, compulsory and that uh, our both teams would follow the rules. I would also like to thank our honorable opponent for helping us in this debate, for giving us points that we could rebut, and for uh, being a worthy opponent. I would like to thank all the audience here for watching our debate and for seeing um, the different points that we can make. I would like to thank the officers in the room, especially um, our officer, Second Lieutenant Radford, who accompanied us here today. I would also like to thank um, our <laughs> mentor, Ms. D'Souza, who has helped us through the process um, of debating. And even though it's our first time debating, we're glad that she's helped us and taught us how to debate. And finally, we would like to thank Mohawk Facilities for offering uh, the cadets here uh, to use its facilities and debate. And of course, our wonderful parents, whom without we couldn't have been here because they drove us here. Thank you. <laughs> I would now like to call upon the captain of Team Tango to deliver their vote thanks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To begin, I would like to thank the Speaker of the House for regulating this debate and making sure it follows procedures. I'd like to thank the timekeeper for ensuring that the times and the speeches fall within the proper times and that no one goes outside of those boundaries. I would especially like to thank the government for raising excellent points and being a formidable op opposing team to debate against today. I would like to thank the honorable judges and the officers in the crowd who came out today, made everything possible, helped us and guided us along the way, and even today especially our CEO, Captain Van Renhoven, for helping us, coaching the debate team, and getting us to where we are. I would like to thank the parents, as mentioned by the government, for bringing us out here today. Probably saved a lot of walking time for a lot of us. And I would like to thank everyone who has attended and made this debate possible. Thank you. This concludes the debate. I now declare this debate closed. Okay, so on to the stars of the show at this particular moment, and I'm sure these gentlemen here are waiting as eagerly as everyone to find out. So, uh, by a score of 894 to 887, the winners of this year's Air Cadet League debating competition are Team Tango.